everybody. This week I got some more Star Wars goodies for you. We're going to start out here taking a look at one of the early Star Wars catalogs that's actually this one's missing its cover after being in storage for years. Got a little dry or I don't know if there's staples on there now. It looks like it was glued together. But with the cover missing, this uh, is one of the earliest catalogs that Kenner put out. I'm sure Luke, Han Solo, Princess Leia were the other action figures over here, C-3PO and Chewbacca as well. But one of the great things about this early catalog is uh, it's set up in a way that everything that was currently available in the store at the time for purchase has this great Starfield background. And when you get to these pink pages that you can see back here, I'll let you look at the catalog a little bit. There's the pistol, laser pistol I looked at a few weeks ago. Inflatable lightsaber, which was great. Lit up like a flashlight. AM radio, right? It wouldn't be the 70s without, without AM radio. Let's take a look at one more page here. If I can get it. Dip Dots paint set. Plaints? Poster set? I guess that's how you say it. Anyway. When you get to this, I'll take this out because it's already fallen out. When you get to this pink section, we get to this great coming soon or coming attractions portion of the catalog, right? All these figures that we know so well from our collections here. But eight new Star Wars mini action figures. Add them to your Star Wars collection. Who do we have? Hammerhead, the Gonk Droid, R5-D4, etc., and so on. What else? Probably a lot of stuff in here you had as a kid. A carrying case, Droid Factory with a thousand parts, the dewback, up the cantina with, if you can see it there, it looks like blue snaggletooth up at the bar, looks like Ponda Baba got knocked down by Obi-Wan already, stormtroopers coming in, um, that's an interesting set, there are a lot of variations uh, on that set, there are a couple different uh, Star Wars cantinas, one by Sears, one by Kenner, or one that was exclusively through Sears, Star Wars Land of the Jawas playset with the cardboard backdrop. They reused this one for Empire Strikes Back as well. I think they replaced it with an AT AT. No, I won't say AT AT, but they replaced that with an AT AT and turned the sand color down here white for snow. But what I want to look at this week in our video are these, or some of these, die cast vehicles that uh, were produced in 78 or 79. Now, if you look at this closely, and you've actually seen these die cast models before. These are, you can tell they are prototypes. They aren't what the finished vehicles look like. At least in my experience, I've never seen any in the package or out of the package that look like, look quite like these. These look rather unfinished here. But the description says, coming soon, highly detailed, sturdy replicas made of die cast metal and high impact plastic, all with working parts. And we've got the Imperial Cruiser, which is not labeled a Star Destroyer. Millennium Falcon, which we can identify and the Y-Wing. Now, there's no mention of the X-Wing, but there was an X-Wing as well. Uh, and I don't think anywhere else in this catalog will we see other die-cast vehicles. No. Movie Viewer, R2-D2 Bot Bag, Play-Doh. God, I had all of this stuff. Oop, the 12-inch figures. Van set, which I had. Great. The little rip cords, you race those across the kitchen floor. Radio control R2-D2. Anyway, we take a look at this, right? We see the prototypes. We move on to a later Star Wars catalog. This is a little bit, little bit beat up here, but they are listed. Oh, there's the rest of the figures. At some point in here, lots of the same stuff. Let me get to the right page. Bands. This looks like pretty much the same catalog. Oh, here they are on the back. So what do we have? Die-cast vehicles, TIE Fighter, solar panels, and Darth Vader. Interesting, they put Darth Vader in the uh, standard TIE Fighter. His TIE Fighter was also later released as one of these mini die-cast vehicles. We've got the X-Wing, and we have down here Luke's land speeder with C-3PO and uh, Luke figures in it. We move on to the Empire Strikes Back catalog, one of the many. And this time by... This time in the collection, they added quite a few. There was also a TIE Bomber, which I think was limited production. I remember being a kid and always, you know, looking for that TIE Bomber when we went out. And I had the opportunity to pick something up, but I could never find it in the store. I'll have to check eBay to see what they're going for. But here we've got the uh, TIE Fighter, X-Wing. It would be easier if I did this. 
the Snow Speeder, Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, Lance Speeder, Slave One, Twin Pod Cloud Car, and we'll take a look at how these are described. Diecast vehicles, there we go. There we have an Imperial TIE Fighter and Darth Vader TIE Fighter. Precisely crafted replicas made of diecast metal and high impact plastic with moving features. Well, these were a blast. Um, what I want to take a look at is two or two of the ones that I have uh, of the, uh, I think I have four or five of these ultimately. I have the X-Wing and I know I have the Star Destroyer somewhere. But these are wonderful little toys. They were and they still are. Um, the front of this here, that's die cast. The, bo the body here is, is metal and then you've got the, uh, the engines here that are plastic. But if you take a look at this Y-Wing, great. Great, great, great. We'll get a close-up on, uh, on the detail here. You can take a look at it. These plastic guns up here swivel around. Got these engines come with these little supports here so when you set it down it's not laying flat against the ground or the table on its belly. On the bottom we've got this little bomb that was always fun and you know one of the first things you lose uh, as a kid playing with this. Two guns on the front, little support stand here that you can flip up and take down so you can fly and pull that up kind of like a almost like a landing gear of some type. These engines pop off as well they just clip right in into the side and we can drop this bomb and let that fall and pretend we're blowing up the Death Star. If we look in the cockpit here I don't remember if they replicated a pilot. No, it doesn't look like there's a... is there? It doesn't look like they tried to replicate a pilot in there or maybe they did. I'll have to get out a magnifying glass and a flashlight and really go into there. But I was always fascinated with these as a kid because of the level of detail, the weight of them feels good, and you were able to do a lot of things with these that you weren't able to do with the larger action-figured centered uh, vehicles that came out. There was an X-Wing, of course, and a, and a Y-Wing later on, much later on, and TIE Fighters, etc. But you could play with these in ways you couldn't play with the other ones since you can hold the whole thing in your hand. I remember as a kid stringing these up on fishing line and trying to get them to fly across the room. Sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. Other times they just fall and, and nearly break. But we'll take a look at the bottom of this here for a second. There is some labeling. We'll see what we've got here. Let's see if I can focus this for us. CPG Products Corporation 1979, Kenner Products Cincinnati, Ohio, zip code, etc. made in Hong Kong. But always a sturdy little vehicle, and again, I really liked that as a kid because of the level of detail that I got, and I could, you know, stick these in the pocket or, or, or play with them in a way that the action figure centered vehicles were incapable of doing. So a fun little toy to have in your collection, and these are great for collectors today because they don't take up the space of the action figure vehicles. It's a nice little thing you can set on your desk or on your shelf, and it's not going to take up a, a whole lot of real estate. The other one here that I take a look at is the standard TIE Fighter. All right, we'll get this to focus right on the glass there on the cockpit. Right, you got the laser cannons there on the bottom. Again, great detail. The wings are obviously plastic, but the body and the cockpit are metal at the bottom here. Yeah, the one thing about having these and playing with them as a kid is that paint would easily, well, I don't know how easily, but I played with these pretty hard, that paint would scratch off of the uh, off of the metal like a lot of the Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars you see from decades past. But that just indicates that it was loved and played with, right? But you take a look at there, there's the uh, the cockpit, I guess, lid. I don't know what you, the technical term for that would be. These wings detach so when you're having a battle, of course, you can blow the other ship up and go crashing down. And we can pull this uh, pilot out here, and is it listed, or is it um, said in the catalog that you could pull out Darth Vader? And this is another thing, like the bomb on the Y-Wing, this is what would always get lost, but we pull this out, Once you look in there, not much detail, no detail at all really. We focus this on Vader here. Oh. There we go. Vader with his hands on his lap, just hanging out. I'll have to find what pieces I have left of Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. We'll do a follow-up and see what the pilot looks like on the inside. But it was probably, I guess it would be Vader on that one as well. And I wonder if they changed this in later lines to uh, make that just a generic Imperial 
TIE fighter pilot. That'd be interesting to see. I'll have to see if I can find all the pieces to the other ones. But anyway, if you can pick these up, from what I've seen, uh, some of these on eBay, there are surprisingly a lot of these still in the package. They had a few different package formats. And you can still find some. It looks like a lot of them were taken out of the package, but the package was kept. And at least you can have the box with it if you're into that kind of collecting. But again, just a wonderful little, not so popular, I would assume, Kenner produced Star Wars toy. I mean, this is before the micro, the failed micro collection line of the Empire Strikes Back era and the uh, micro machines later in the 1980s that were even smaller than this. I mean, it was a really nice little, I don't want to say adult collectible of the time, but just a uh, different collectible because I think a lot of us collectors are always so focused on the, on the action figure stuff. So I'll give you some shots here, some close-ups of these again. Pause it, take a good look. Again, we got the guns on the front there. Oop, you saw a preview over there on the left-hand side of what I might be doing my next video on. But good-looking toys. Well, while I showed it, let me uh, let me just throw that out there. I think I'm going to be heading into some other great late '70s stuff in the coming weeks. We'll take a look at some Atari games. I know there's a lot of Atari reviews on YouTube, but I'd like to take a look at these games, not just for gameplay, which really isn't that good for a lot of them. But we'll take a look at the box art. We'll take a look at the people behind that, and all the great stuff uh, that Atari came out with again in the late '70s and early '80s. So, comment. You know, if you want to see a particular Atari game, I got enough of them. Uh, that we could do some good reviews. This is Skydiver. I just picked this one up the other day. Great condition. And the great thing about collecting these is you can get these for six, seven bucks. Nobody really collects them anymore. Uh, and it's always nice to have the box. But Star Wars Diecast, I'll look for more in my collection. I'll show you some more if I can find them. Click the links in the description below if you want to see what I'm selling right now on eBay and Etsy, or you can join me on Instagram because I got a lot of pictures of a lot of the collectibles I have or had uh, in my personal collection on there, and it's fun. So guys, subscribe, hit the like button, and we'll see you later.